Emily as the most fundamental theory of mathematics. It was invented by Heidelberg and Annenberg and, uh, and Maclean, and was greatly developed by Alexandre Grothendieck, who is one of the greatest mathematicians of the 20th century. Uh, now, why is, what is category theory and why is it so fundamental? Well, to answer the question, you have to first address the question of what is mathematics? And as uh, a mathematician who likes to talk about, with strangers about mathematics and who gets angered every time someone confuses mathematics with computation, I often get asked the question, what is mathematics? And I think my answer would be very close to Grothendieck answer. I always say that mathematics is about structures. And in category, these structures are represented by these letters, A, B, Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4. Now, what do we do with these structures? We study them. How do we study them? Well, we compare them. That's the simplest kind of study of structures we can do. How do we come? Now, uh, the comparison of two structures is done by an arrow here. An arrow is called a morphism. So when you consider the, the structures and the comparisons of structures, we do. Well, we get a structure of structures. Okay? Each arrow defines a structure of structures. Okay? Now, if we draw all the structures of structures here, like that, we are getting a new structure. That's a category. A category is a structure of structures. Of structures. Okay. In particular, uh, category is very powerful because it defines what's probably the most important word in the whole of mathematics: uh, the concept of isomorphism. Now, uh, isomorphism comes from the Greek; it means the same structure. So, an isomorphism is a way of saying that two structures are actually one and the same. Now, I should say that the concept of morphism was dependent on the category. A category is sort of, like, uh, sort of like a context, an angle for which you look at the structures. Okay. So the concept of isomorphism depends on the angle through which we look at structures. Okay. I feel like I'm talking gibberish here, so let's give examples. Uh, and the cool thing about doing this at the end of this talk is that we have seen a lot of examples of isomorphism. Particularly, there's an isomorphism here between Hilbert's photo and the set of whole numbers. In which kind of angle, in which kind of sense are they isomorphic? Well, in terms of size, they are both of the same size. So there's an isomorphism of size between Hilbert's photo and the set of whole numbers. Um, I haven't really mentioned this uh, isomorphism here, but there's also an isomorphism between the traveling salesman prime we saw at the beginning and defining short proofs problem. These two are isomorphic in the sense that one is just as hard as the other. So if you look at it the end, through the angle of complexity theory, they are one and the same. Okay. Another important isomorphism in the history of science is the isomorphism between Brannon motion and random walks. If you look through the angle of ergodic theory, you see that these two are one and the same. Okay. Uh, once, uh, another one here, the, the isomorphism between deterministic chaotic and fundamentally probabilistic. Okay. Both are fundamentally unpredictable. They are isomorphic in the sense of unpredictability. Okay. Now it's important to see that the concept of isomorphism is context, is, is, is dependent on the context, the angle through which we, we look at them. If we talk about unpredictability, unpredictability then they are indeed isomorphic, but if we talk about the law of conservation of information, these two are no longer isomorphic. Okay. So it really depends on the angle to which we look at objects, at structures. Like another example here is that PhD student is isomorphic to a slave. This is not obvious to, uh, well, this is not true for people who say that every human should be free or activist and all. But uh, professors all know that this is an isomorphism here. There's a, Isomorphism. And finally, what, probably what the most important isomorphism we've talked about today is the, is the isomorphism between all universal Turing machines. 
between the, the, con the, the concept of computability. Okay. Now, a last thing about category theory. So, category theory, a category, as I said, is a structure of structures of structures. It means that it is a structure. So, we could structure the structures of structures of structures. This is what's known as a functor. Functor is a structure of structures of structures of structures. Okay, okay so this uh, and my talk here. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I know I did. Uh, I want to send a message here. Uh, here, what I've mentioned about all these, these theories here is just the tip of the iceberg. It's just the icing on the cake. But these are extremely, are way more awesome than how I've tried to present them. So my message here is, go further, check them, check them out. Go further into the details. And one way, one way of doing that is uh, looking at uh, the articles of Science for All, where we, which go further in detailing all these different topics. Actually, just these two, because. Uh, there's nothing, well, also case theory. There's nothing written about this here. Which leads me to another point. Uh, obviously, I would love to have written about all the topics of mathematics, but I'm only one man, uh, and I need help. So if you two consider that popular in mathematics, that's showing how awesome mathematics is. If you two consider that this is very important, you should help me. You can go on Sensible and write your own articles. If you do that, there's one rule, make it simple, make it good. Thank you. Thank you for your